Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized low budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe. Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about nuclear reactions. This is topic 7.2, and there is uh, quite a spectacular one. These uh, videos and images, by the way, are from nuclear tests conducted in the Pacific Ocean in the 1950s. Um, they were not uh, directly a part of warfare, but uh, many of the uh, soldiers involved, or sailors, uh, if you look carefully, you can see some boats down there. Uh, many of the sailors who were near to these nuclear reactions did suffer from uh, later symptoms uh, from radiation exposure. Okay, learning objective for today. Uh, you will be able to solve problems with mass defect and binding energy. You will be able to calculate the energy released in nuclear reactions. You will be able to describe the variation with nucleon number of the average binding energy per nucleon. So that's a pretty quick lesson. Okay, first let's look at fusion. Uh, fusion is a process by which two or more nuclei join together or fuse thereby forming a single heavier nucleus. So in this example, we have uh, hydrogen isotopes, two hydrogen isotopes, uh, deuterium and tritium, and they uh, fuse to form helium and a whole lot of kinetic energy and uh, free neutron. So there you go, there's a fusion reaction. Fission looks a little bit different. Fission is uh, a nuclear reaction or radioactive decay process in which the nucleus of an atom splits into smaller parts. And we've already seen fission in topic 7.1. So here we have uh, uranium-235, uh, and we'll look at this reaction in more detail. Uh, uranium-235 becoming uranium-236 with the addition of a neutron, and then splitting off into two uh, new isotopes and more neutrons. Okay, so there you go, there's fission. Uh, and again, later on in topic 7.2. We will look at this reaction in more detail. Okay, a unified mass unit is defined as 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So there are uh, 12 nucleons in carbon 12. So uh, this gives us uh, a mass for both protons and neutrons. Um, and there you go. This is uh, the unified mass unit given in your textbook uh, to one, two, three, uh, seven significant, bleh, significant figures. Okay, uh, there's a question mark here. Why a question mark? Uh, because in 2019, we changed uh, the unified mass unit. Okay, so the current value looks like this. Uh, it has more significant figures. Um, these are tentative. Uh, but neither of these really matter for IB physics purposes because your data booklet gives it as this value, okay? So don't get too worried about it. But yeah, we have changed uh, the value of the unified mass unit in recent history. Uh, pretty incredible. Uh, it's no longer based on 1 12th the mass of an atom of carbon-12, but uh, just for historical purposes, you should know this. <clears throat> okay, mass defect. Um, so here we have a helium atom, and the mass of the nucleus is given as 4.00156 unified mass units, okay? However, uh, oddly, if we look at the mass of two protons and two neutrons, uh, all separated, what we find is that they, the total masses will have a slightly larger value. Um, or even a significantly larger value. So, question, where is the missing mass? If you, uh, if you want to discuss it for a minute, you could pause the video here, and I might even hum the Jeopardy theme song while I did that. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's enough. So you've perhaps thought about it, or you discussed it, you paused the video. Uh, the answer to this question is, Interesting. So, uh, the mass of protons and neutrons bound together in a nucleus is generally, or always, less than the total mass of individual protons and neutrons. Okay, The difference is called the mass defect, and uh, it is given by this value. Uh, 
this is a delta. So delta is equal to the total mass of nucleons minus the mass of the nucleus. Okay, so what's happened is some of our mass is converted into energy. Uh, and this energy is called the binding energy of the nucleus. You might be asking yourself, how can mass become energy? That's crazy talk. Well, it could be crazy talk unless you remember this equation. And of course you do, because it's one of the most famous equations in physics given by our very good friend, Albert Einstein. Uh, and it is in the data booklet. Uh, you can write the equation for mass defect as Z times the mass of a proton, so this is your proton number, plus A minus Z times the mass of the nucleus. And recall that uh, A then is the atomic mass number. This again is the number of protons. And from this all we subtract the mass of the nucleus. Uh, sorry, this should be neutron mass. My bad. My bad. Okay, so we have number of protons, mass of protons here. Uh, we have the mass of the neutrons here. And from all of this, we subtract the mass of the nucleus. That gives us mass defect. Okay, and this is in the data booklet. There you go. Change in energy is equal to change in mass times the velocity of light squared, which is also in your data booklet. Uh, it is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so binding energy. Binding energy is just the amount of work required to completely separate the nucleons from the nucleus. Okay, so here we have a nucleus, and to this we add energy. And when we add energy to this system, we can now pull apart our uh, nuclei. So... Um, one way to think about this is uh, a situation where you have a bunch of little magnets stuck together. It's not a perfect analogy, but bear with me. Um, when you pull magnets apart, you do that by applying a force. You do work, right? Well, it's the same with chemical bonds, and in this case, uh, nuclear bonds. Uh, in order to separate our particles, we have to add energy, just as if we were pulling apart magnets. Okay, um, and again, yes, this is similar to chemical bonds, where if you're going to break something up, you have to add energy. Slightly counterintuitive until you remember my magnet analogy. Okay, uh, so binding energy is the amount of work re required to completely separate all the nucleon nucleons in a given nucleus. Okay, so binding energy is going to be given by mass defect times the speed of light squared. Okay, so uh, more stable nuclei will require more binding energy. Okay, so uh, question, how much energy is contained in one nucleon? Well, to answer that question, we're first going to uh, look, of course, at Albert Einstein's famous equation, and we will need the mass of one of our nucleons. So. Uh, you will find this value uh, not in your data booklet, but you may recognize it from our previous work. Uh, this is the, the unified mass unit, okay? So uh, this is U, okay? And here we have the speed of light squared. Our sig figs are differing uh, noticeably, but that's okay. We can round. Uh, this uh, multiplied by this squared will give us this value. Again, we've got a bit of a rounding issue here, but just bear with me. We're going to all round it all, round it all down a little bit later. Okay, uh, so we're going to take this energy and convert it to electron volts using this conversion factor, which you should recognize from topic 7.1. Uh, and this then will give 931.5 times 10 to the 6 electron volts, or... 931.5 mega electron volts. Okay, so hold off, hold on, hold on to your horses. Uh, so we can conclude from this that one uh, unified mass unit times the speed of light squared is equal to this much energy. Okay, 
And if we do just a little bit of algebra and divide both sides by the speed of light squared, what we're going to have then is 931.5 mega electron volts per the speed of light squared. Okay, so awesome. You know what? This is a new unit for mass and it is a unit for mass that is in your data booklet. The reason why we use this unit for mass is because it is extremely useful for converting mass to energy in nuclear uh, equations. Uh, you will find a number of values in your data booklet with matching units uh, for protons, neutrons, and electrons. And I haven't included them there because you have a data booklet and you can look it up. Okay, so quick example calculation here. Uh, here are the components of one deuterium uh, hydrogen atom, okay? Uh, I think it's deuterium. I could be wrong about that, actually. Now, now I'm going to have to check and make a note. Uh, anyway, uh, so here we have our hydrogen. Here we have uh, the proton and the atomic mass unit or unified mass unit is now what we say instead of uh, atomic mass unit. Anyway, uh, here we have the unified mass unit for a neutron and the unified mass unit for an electron. And you will note that the electron is yeah, about a thousand times smaller uh, than our other particles, our other nucleons. Okay, so we add all this up and we get 2.016 uh, 490 unified mass units. When we look at just the mass of the entire atom, we get uh, quite a different value for our mass, and that gives us this mass defect, which, uh, based on our earlier work, uh, we can take and multiply by our previous value, uh, 931.5 mega electron volts, and very quickly get an energy value for this particular mass defect. Nice. Okay, here's another example uh, where we have uh, radium decaying into radon and helium. Uh, this is undoubtedly a natural decay. It's not the product of uh, artificial human um, messing around. So uh, the mass of our radium, uh, sorry, our radium, yes, is given by this value, mass of the radon here, mass of the helium here. Okay, uh, so we calculate our mass defect in this particular equation. Instead of a uh, delta, they have just m sub d, which is fine. We can use whatever variables we want in physics. Uh, so we find that our mass defect, uh, which we've actually seen before, is uh, 0 .0, 0 0.0053 unified mass units. We then multiply that mass defect by just this value. That's all we need and that will give us 4.94 uh, mega electron volts. So you can see how useful this is. It's much, much faster um, than using Einstein's formula. Okay, next we're gonna look at binding energy per nucleon. <clears throat> and this is the amount of work required to separate the nucleons of the nucleus, and then divided by, again, the number of nucleons. What we have here is a pretty predictable relationship uh, with one little exception here when we're looking at uh, this particular isotope of helium transitioning to lithium. And uh, chemistry students, you, uh, you may look a little more deeply into that. We're, we're not going to cover it in IB physics. Um, this is a measure of how stable the nucleus is uh, generally. So... This chart is useful because we can predict uh, what is likely to happen with our isotopes based on the number of nucleons, okay? So at around 60 nucleons, we have a very stable region of isotopes here where these guys uh, are unlikely to uh, either decay or fuse into other stuff. And in fact, uh, if you look at solar fusion, this, is, this area is kind of the stopping point for fusion in the sun. Uh, below 60, we find nucleides, uh, sorry, nuclides that are going to fuse under the right conditions, for example, being in the heart of a star. Uh, and above 60, we have 
elements that will tend to fission under the right condition, and the right condition is generally just existing for long enough to decay. So there you go. <clears throat> so here are a couple strategies for calculating biting energy and mass defect. Uh, first, uh, find the differences in masses between all the components on the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation. And this is going to tell you the energy released. Or <clears throat> you could find the difference in binding energies between the components on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And that way, you can calculate your mass defect. Okay, so if you know the energy released, uh, sorry, if you know the difference in mass, the mass defect, you can calculate energy. If you know the difference in energy, you can calculate the mass defect. So there you go. Okay, these are my sources. And there you go. There may be a lesson two on this. This is not all of topic 7.2, but uh, my other presentation needs quite a, quite a lot of work, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, it may be a while. All right. Thanks for watching. Do not click like. Do not click subscribe. Take care.